Minor League Baseball in Richmond, Virginia goes back decades and generations. Parker Field gave way to the Diamond, the Colts, then the Virginians, then the Braves. Then the season of 2009 saw an empty diamond and total silence. After the darkness came, Welcome to Funville! Having fun every day, being different every day, being impactful every day. Since 2010, just under 5 million fans have cheered on the Richmond Flying Squirrels at the Diamond. Over 78 players have made it to the major leagues, and countless local organizations have been enveloped by the energy and the passion. And now another season is in front of us. The memory-making machine is ready for the 2023 Eastern League season of having a lot of fun and going nuts. Welcome to Countdown to Opening Day, a preview of the Flying Squirrels 2023 season, sponsored by The Floor Store. The Squirrels home opener is this Friday night. Shorty, since 2010, millions of families across RVA, along with the players and staff, keep cheering! have made some great memories during Flying Squirrels games at the Diamond. Meanwhile, starting off this special, CBS 6 Sports Director Lane Casadante takes a look back at the last 13 years and shows us what's ahead for the Squirrels. And after the break, we look back at the excitement of making the 2022 playoffs. I still have a headache. And Lane gives us the nuts and bolts of the 2023 team. Da, 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 da. Let me get friendly. Okay. <laughs> Central Virginia has its fair share of baseball fans, but not everybody considers themselves diehard followers of the national pastime. What everybody does enjoy is a fun night out, a chance to be with family and friends, and to experience things you'll talk about the next day and beyond. There's just so much out there that connects to so many people and we're really proud of the fact that we are fun for all. It's not just a slogan, it's the way we do things. Be fun every day, be different every day, be impactful every day. People come here in droves and they make memories. The Flying Squirrels came to Richmond as complete newcomers in 2010, entering an atmosphere steeped in tradition and not always open to new ideas and personalities. Parney and his tireless staff changed that narrative and in a relatively short time have become an important part of not just the fabric of the RVA, but have set a new standard for minor league success. I always say Richmond is a special place full of special people doing special things and certainly uh, that's how I feel about the Flying Squirrels and our relationship with Richmond. We love Richmond and Richmond loves us back. It's about the opportunity to make those moments every single night um, and, and every single night, you know, have it be special. We are definitely a baseball family. Our son started playing baseball when he was seven. Our daughter pl started playing softball when she was eight. And to be able to take them to a Flying Squirrels game is awesome. These kids have been going to these games since they were really young. I've been here as a visitor. I've been here as an, as an opponent with another team. And seeing the passion in this stadium every night from the fans was always just infatuating to me. If Parney was here, he would say they don't announce the attendance, they name it. There's Jim, there's Bill, there's Bob. I actually think I think about it this way. When we pay what we pay to go to a movie, um, for our family, we can go to two Squirrels games. If I went to a movie twice, I'd see the same thing. Every time you go to a Squirrels game, you see something different. The team has made their own memories during that time as well. COVID stole an entire year away from minor league baseball, leaving the diamond empty and quiet for an entire season. That did not mean that the team gave up on what they feel is their responsibility to the community. 
It was definitely one of the toughest years ever, and I feel like we were one of the first people to turn it around into a positive way by doing our 500 Bases of Love campaign. Our purpose was to find a way to uplift the community. It's events like that, and maybe the threat of losing baseball again without a new stadium, that has fans clamoring for the squirrels to get this season started. We'll have had opening day sold out weeks in advance of the start of the season, which outside of 2010, our very first year, there's nothing that's approached that. For people to be that pumped up about the flying squirrels this deep into our relationship shows that we're working really hard every day to make that relationship special and different and fun and impactful. It's anticipation and support like that that has Parney and his staff more than excited about the future. A proposed new stadium is scheduled to be ready in two years, with groundbreaking hopefully set for later this summer. The squirrels know what it will mean not just for them, but for the entire area, and it has them more than pumped to come to the park every night. I'm excited for our future. I, our new ballpark is going to be amazing. The sky's the limit. I think that Richmond fans don't exactly know what they don't have yet as far as the new facilities go. It's time to give Richmond what this community deserves, what our fan base deserves. I mean, to lead all of AA baseball in attendance in a facility that was really only designed to last another three to five years is, it is a miracle. Did we get everything? Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Thank you. For Richmond, it was massive. This team has seen so much great fan support over the last decade plus and not a whole lot of win. Saturday night, we finished our game here and we're waiting for the Akron Harrisburg game to end. We thought uh, Harrisburg was going to lose to Akron, and honestly, we thought we were done. I see how lopsided the score is, so I, I had my iPad in the booth and I shut it off. And then Harrisburg came back, and I jumped up and I sprinted into Pelfrey's office, and I was yelling things that I cannot yell on or say on CBS 6 right now. Uh, but we were alive. I texted all the guys, said, Guys, we have to win tomorrow, and Harrisburg has to beat Akron tomorrow and we're in. Moving into Sunday, there was still a chance. We took care of our business. Man, we were feeling good. Joe T was getting the champagne ready. Everybody was having a good time getting together. Uh, it felt kind of inevitable, but it's never sure until you see that last out, when that final out finally hit. We erupted in celebration and just really had one of the more memorable nights, honestly. Of, uh, of my personal 34 year career. It was just a wonderful night of memory making, of celebration. It was just so fun to be able to see them have that chance to experience that moment. Seeing the joy in all of those players' faces was great. We were so positive going into the second half of the season. Um, our ticket sales increased. And then we had the largest crowd in all of minor league baseball at any level for the playoffs. We've been around for at that point, 12 years, and that was only the third time that we made the playoffs. So I tell all the young kids, like, anytime you win something, you really need to embrace it because winning's hard, and it doesn't happen all the time. So unfortunately, we were out in two in barbecue uh, and, and didn't, didn't win any of the playoff games. Uh, but to be there set the tone, I feel like, for Dennis Pelfrey and the players to do something even bigger in 2023. Several of the San Francisco Giants' top 25 prospects could eventually find their way to Richmond at some point this season. Starting with the next big catching prospect in the organization, Patrick Bailey. Bailey's a North Carolina native who was selected 13th overall in the 2020 draft. The switch hitter has been praised for his pitch calling and his agility behind the plate, but admittedly would like to see his offense pick up a bit at the next level. I'm excited as a catcher with just the amount of pitching prospects, prospects we have. Um, I think it's an exciting time to, to be a Giants fan. He has played way better than people give him credit for. 
He's a one of the best catchers in all of minor league baseball, if not the best defensive catcher in all of minor league baseball. He can beat you with a single, a walk. He can hit a homer here and there. Vaughn Brown is rated the Giants' fifth best prospect by MLB.com and led all of the minor leagues in hitting last year, which was his first full pro season. Brown hit a combined 23 homers last year and appeared in just one game for the Squirrels at the end of the season. With his speed in the outfield and on the bases, he's projected as a 30-30 type player who just needs the chance to prove his worth at the next level. He can run, he's got power, he can throw, he's a good defensive player, he's smart, he's hardworking. Marco Luciano is the number two overall prospect for the Giants. A back injury limited him to just 57 games last year and has slowed his progress this spring as well. But he hits for power to all fields and has a high baseball IQ that should serve him well when he finally arrives. Well, for me, that's the fun part because I love challenges. I love to put myself in challenges and play with, with players that have better talent than I do because that will force me to do better. Back again this summer is manager Dennis Pelfrey, who led the Squirrels to a division title in the first half of last season and a playoff appearance. Pelfrey has just two seasons of managing in professional baseball, but they've been two very successful seasons, and with his experience at the Diamond last year, he feels even more prepared to repeat that success this year. You know, I made this quote, I think, in, uh, in the middle of the season after we clinched, and, you know, with our work ethic and what our guys were putting in every day, you know, I would put that ball club up against anybody. I was very happy with the way the team played the entire year last year and how they prepared. It was great. Peanuts, popcorn, and you cannot forget about those squirrely fries. Those are so good. All classic ballpark snacks to munch on during nine innings of baseball. But this year, there are some new treats that you can only find at the Diamond. Nutsy and Natasha are here with us at the Park RVA. They're going to help us reveal one of the newest concession items, Shawnee. Introducing the big dill dog. It combines a hot dog with an entire dill pickle. <laughs> and Stotsy loved it. Lane, along with Steve Bales, the director of food and beverage for the Flying Squirrels, and Trey Wilson, the director of communication, will show us some of the other new ballpark snacks that you can enjoy at the Diamond during the 2023 season. Mm. One of the main reasons that a lot of fans come to the ballpark is not just for the game, but it's for the food. The one that really got me excited right off the bat was the helmet full of nachos. <laughs> the helmet full of nachos, and you can put whatever toppings you want on it. It's at the taco cart, souvenir helmet. We loaded up with the tricolor chips, and you can put tomatoes, pico, salsa. We put shredded cheese on this one. I recommend the nacho cheese just so it gets all the way through and makes them really good. Chicken Parmesan sandwich, and what we've done is we, we're already serving cheese sticks in the stand. So we've taken three cheese sticks, marinara, Parmesan cheese, on top of a fried chicken breast. Why does everybody want to fry everything? Not that it's a bad <laughs> thing, but everybody just wants to fry everything. It's just, I mean, fried food is delicious, and you can you can put different sauces on there to dip it in. So we wanted something with a little kick, give those pickles some spice. I never would have thought to fry a pickle, but that's fantastic. That's really, really good. They're really good. And the sauce on it is what again? That's a Chipotle ranch. Oh. I'm gonna want to try that. That's really, really good. So what is this one? This is the Big Dill Dog, and it's a nice big pickle. We hinge it, we put a hot dog in there and some spicy mustard. Like All I said, right. they are a little tricky with the crispiness of the pickle. Just gotta go for it. <laughs> that is actually pretty good. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought to do that, but that's pretty good. They have hot dogs with pickles on them already, right? Like one of those styles of hot dogs, some, right? We're just cutting out the middleman some bread. Some Chicago something. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> if you're trying to avoid bread, there you go. That's for you. While you guys learn about what else is going on this season, we're going to be finishing all this stuff. So bear with us. <laughs> we try not to get too lost in the numbers. What is war? War? Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> Wins above replacement? How do you figure it out? What do you mean? I don't think about my war that much, if at all. Google it. <laughs> war is wins above replacement, and so that's the value that a player has to the overall record of a team. It's based off of fielding percentages on defense and then offensive metrics that they use, such as home runs and stolen bases. And so the higher that your war is, the more you've contributed to the winning of that particular team. I'm a big fan of 
of the homers. And I'm a big fan of strikeouts. The least favorite stat these days is slugging percentage. There's a lot of value put on the home run. I've always appreciated the batters who can hit for a high average because it's really hard to do. Some of our favorite games that we've watched over the years are those those tight pitchers duels. And so having to bunt the ball and, and runners steal bases, you know, that, that was the baseball I grew up loving and, and learning to play. I like home runs. Yeah. <laughs> In today's game where pitchers are throwing harder than ever, when the breaking stuff, the balls have more spin on them than they ever have before, to still be able to make you know consistent contact and get hits on a regular basis, uh, that I think has become a lost art. For somebody who has to deal with stats every day, I'm not a huge stats person. <laughs> I don't know anything about baseball. <laughs> My favorite stat is the number of wine bottles that are in the pub the morning after opening night. <laughs> My favorite stat is on base percentage. Whip, which is walks and hits per innings pitched. I'm still a batting average guy. Time of game! Time of game is a huge stat for me. That's one thing that we love about going to a Squirrels game is that you're not gonna be there for four or five hours. Time of game, most important stat. Also, we want to win more than we lose and make the playoffs so that we can have a good time with Dennis Pelfrey. So for me, the Squirrels' uh, involvement in our community goes so much further than just baseball. There's always something going on at the Diamond, and so the Squirrels are actively involved in uh, helping elementary school kids develop a, a love and a passion for reading. Uh, they give back to the youth baseball community as well as you know high school and collegiate. They're such a great community partner, not just in the world of baseball, but in the world of, of just being you know great human beings and, and helping helping each other. So Flying Squirrels Charities' uh, mission is to impact RVA in the most positive way by um, enhancing education. Uh, doing some athletic programming, um, working on the negative social determinants that influence our community. That's what makes the Squirrels different. We're not a baseball team. We've worked really, really hard to be an impactful, integral fabric in this community 365 days a year. Who, oh, by the way, we also play 69 home baseball games at the Diamond and 69 away baseball games across the Eastern League. But, but that's the core of what we have become over the years. We give out three scholarships every year and they are a four-year renewable, um, one $5,000 and two $1,000 scholarships. The Richmond 34 scholarship that was started last year, our first winner was Marissa Greenhow. My friends and family were ecstatic to hear that I received this scholarship, knowing that I was valedictorian in my class and I worked so hard. And it's helped me be able to focus more in college on my classwork as well as engaging on campus without having to worry about financial matters. You know, w with, with a high profile comes the responsibility to always do the right thing. And, um, you know, when we started our relationship with Elizabeth Rice and, and um, Elizabeth Johnson Rice and the Richmond 34, it was because that story needed to continue to be told. And we felt like it wasn't being told as much as it should be. And now you see Richmond 34 legacy painted on the diamonds. Just only 63 years ago, only 63 years ago, uh, Elizabeth Johnson Rice was arrested for the color of her skin. For the Military Appreciation Nights, uh, the Flying Squirrels do a great job of not only recognizing uh, the value that our, our men and women that have uh, served in, in the armed services do for us, uh, but they do it in such a way that they actually function in a way to help provide resources uh, for that community. And so uh, they will auction off jerseys, uh, they bring the service members out to throw out first pitches, uh, they give us a chance to show our thanks and appreciation for them. I do have family that was in the military and still currently in the military, so it's very close to my heart. You know, our last Saturday home game is our Ask Childhood Cancer Foundation Day, and I think it's the most incredible experience at a ballpark you'll ever have. Standing saluting these kids who've dealt with pediatric cancer and their families, um, some of whom have lost children um, because of you know, pediatric cancer, you know, it's just, it's, it's such a magical moment and I really wish everyone in Richmond could experience that.
I have the privilege of having a renewing baseball in the inner cities league, which is part of uh, MLB's partnership with local communities to uh, to foster baseball in underserved communities. It, it's just a great opportunity for us to be supported uh, by by the the flying squirrels uh, as we continue to try to grow baseball here in our community. Squirreloween is a free event that we host every year at the Diamond for kids who might not be able to trick or treat in their own neighborhoods to come here and trick or treat um, safely and for free. I love all of our events. Um, hot stove is really cool. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy my role at the hot stove of being able to interview whoever the keynote person is because, you know, when I was a little boy playing in the backyard, I used to pretend I was Andre Hawk Dawson, right, and, and the outfielder for the Montreal Expos. And then November 10th of this past year, I'm on stage interviewing Andre the Hawk Dawson, you know, or the same can be said for Lee Smith or Will the Thrill Clark or whoever. Uh, that's one of the really cool things that, that this job and this uh, career it enables you to do. Um, I like our golf tournaments, like the bowling tournament. I like everything that we do, and, and Hannah and the crew have really done an amazing job. Uh, I'm really proud of the way that they've adapted and grown to do different events. And it's not just a, a, a one event type situation. We Just like the squirrels are year round, Flying Squirrels Charities has become year round as well. All right, everybody, there is truly something for everyone every night that you come to the ballpark. That's right, Lanier. We got some awesome fans here to tell everybody what it's all about. All right, let's run down the list. What do we have? Football! What do we have on Tuesday? All right, explain to everybody what is a silver squirrel. Fans 55 years or older can get a ticket to every Tuesday game. And a t-shirt, a food voucher. And up to 40% savings. Wednesday. Wine and Ooh, wine and canine. That's right, bring your dog and have some wine. And that's the other way around, bring your wine and have some dog. That wouldn't be good, Laner. Dogs get in free for every Wednesday night home game. And we have $5 glasses of wine and $6 ice cold frozen slushies. Thursday and Saturday! In your face, fireworks! Best show in town, inside the fences. I can actually hear him from my office. That's cheating, man. Next up is Friday! Happy Hour! Awesome drink specials every Friday home game. And? Las Odias Voladores. That's Spanish for flying squirrels later. Come out and celebrate the sport of baseball and its history in Latin America. Last but not least, Sunday! Squirrels And kids can sign up for free at squirrelsbaseball.com. You get a ticket to every Sunday game, you get a t-shirt, and they get a chance to run the bases after the game. And later, much, much more. Fun for all! As always, the Fly Squirrels, a part of the Richmond community. Don't forget, Squirrel season opener Friday night at 6.30. The gates will be open at 5 o'clock. And we're already sold out, but we're home Saturday night with fireworks after the game, and Sunday we'll have an excellent promotion. <laughs> Thanks to the Park RVA for having us site. This place is fantastic. We're looking forward to seeing you. And thank you, Parney. Thanks to thank the you. entire Flying Squirrels organization. Right. Thank you for joining us for Countdown to Opening Day. I'm Sean Robinson. We'll see you Friday night at the Diamond for the season opener of the Richmond Flying Squirrels. Have fun, go nuts. Have fun, go nuts. Thanks for watching Countdown to Opening Day, a preview of the Flying Squirrels 2023 season, sponsored by The Floor Store.